We're here from the Stop Slavery Summit in Hong Kong, an event that gives a voice to the 40.3 million people in some form of modern slavery and unites the business community with shared responsibility to take a stand. Focusing on stopping modern slavery through concrete action, from the role of investors, the C-suite and board of directors play, to how technology, data and regulation can help tackle this issue. What we've heard here today is that there is a growing willingness for business to work together towards a common goal and act. I constantly encounter looks of amazement from acquaintances who simply cannot believe that in modern day Hong Kong, human trafficking and forced labor are an issue. The fact is that human slavery is a global dirty secret and no jurisdiction however well governed, can put its hand on its heart and assert that it has driven out such practices entirely. So I was sold into slavery at the age of seven. Modern day slavery, you know, it is a real thing. It is huge. It is a money-making machine, some have said, but more or less, this trade needs to stop. It's over 40 million people in slavery and the majority of those are women and girls. In terms of prevalence, Africa is the region that has um, the highest risk of modern slavery, but as you'll see, it's closely followed by the Asian pack. Because when you actually look at absolute numbers, the most slaves are in, in this region where we are today, over, um, close to 25 million. With all of the UN, NGO and government organizations combined coming together, the world helps less than 1%. We know that the private sector needs to be involved in addressing this. First Rate can impact change by raising awareness with our vendors and our clients and our partners. You know, Hong Kong is a major sourcing entrepot and uh, you know, Williams Lee Tag, we have a major sourcing operation ourselves in the region. Uh, seventh largest trading nation uh, coming out of China to the world. We're in a position to influence uh, the supply chains that feed into that, uh, and it's fundamentally right that we should do so. Um, but if you look at a business model, if it relies on or depends on underpaid labour, weak regulation or social issues, or even slavery in some supply chains, that, 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 those earnings are not going to be sustainable for, forever. But it's not just about earnings. I think quality of management is a really important aspect too. Investors as well as companies actually have a responsibility to respect human rights um, through their operations and through their business relationships. In the recent period and our plans going forward, Linklaters is looking to collaborate more, even more closely with our clients than we have before in the area of bringing legal firepower to the modern slavery concern. But what we find through this case study is that actually non-expert stakeholders are the ones that can help us scale this kind of change. And so I stand here today saying let's really put that S back into ESG. We don't think that technology is the silver bullet. We don't think that worker voice is going to fix everything. Uh, and if we're going to create more tools that are looking at both collecting data, disseminating data, standardizing data, we have to collaborate. So I really wanted to touch on three areas that we've mentioned earlier about collaboration, about uniform tools and techniques, and about consistent data cons consolidation and use. You have all the governments now looking at blockchain as a potential solution to some of their biggest problems because they need transparency, they need to go back to their donors to let them know where the money goes. The issue of modern slavery is particularly relevant for Hong Kong as a city because Hong Kong as a city relies so heavily on a very large population of uh, cheap, unskilled labour in the form of migrant domestic workers, sex workers, but also construction workers. We owe a duty of care to these individuals to ensure that we have safeguards in place as a city to protect them from any forms of exploitation. If we don't have the laws in place to allow law enforcement to seize those assets and stop people from using Hong Kong bank, bank accounts for money laundering purposes, then we are not doing our responsibility. What action has the Stop Slavery Summit inspired you to take to stop modern slavery? How will you join this common goal and act?